world news tonight, the extraordinary efforts to stop bird flu at the border. The first new rules in 25 years. How it will affect millions of passengers on planes and ships. Exit strategy. The Pentagon's plans to reduce American forces in Iraq by 50,000. Iraqi leaders demand to know when the U.S. will be gone for good. In New Orleans, the search for 4,000 people still missing from Hurricane Katrina. How many of them are lost in shelters and how many are dead? Huge excitement over the new Xbox from Microsoft. Video games plus a billion dollar bet on the future of entertainment. And Ted Koppel says goodbye to Nightline. 25 years bringing people together and showing us the world. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight. Reporting from ABC News headquarters, Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. We start tonight with the unprecedented effort to stop a deadly pandemic of bird flu from hitting the country. For the first time in 25 years, the government is changing the rules on how it keeps dangerous viruses from entering the country. These new rules would give officials broad authority to screen passengers on planes and ships and put people who may be sick in mandatory quarantine. It is something to think about as so many people begin traveling for the holiday weekend. ABC's Lisa Stark joins us live from Reagan National Airport. And Lisa, these new regulations are for a world where a virus can spread with lightning speed. Absolutely, Elizabeth, spread very efficiently, as we know, through air travel. Now, the guidelines proposed today by the Centers for Disease Control include a number of changes. First and foremost, they're expanding the definition of those who could be subject to quarantine to include persons with fever and flu-like symptoms. Under the new guidelines, the government would have easy access to information about passengers on airlines and cruise ships. The CDC says that's critical, so it can trace everyone who may have come in contact with a sick passenger. What was highlighted during the SARS epidemic in 2003 was a remarkable inability to obtain accurate contact information of potentially exposed passengers in sufficient time to notify them and to check in on their health status. Passengers flying internationally and to one of 67 major domestic airports would be asked for name, address, phone number, email address, passport number, traveling companions, and emergency contact. Airlines would keep that information for 60 days and would have to give it to the CDC within 12 hours when asked. The CDC would keep the information for up to a year. The same would apply to cruise ship passengers. We want to highlight is that there are very strict confidentiality and privacy security requirements about the maintaining of this information. Under the new regulations, if the CDC believes someone has a communicable disease, it can quarantine them for up to three days without an appeal. That has to be done very, very carefully and only, only uh, in the dire circumstances. The CDC has expanded its quarantine stations at U.S. airports from 8 to 18. Doctors at the stations can examine sick passengers. In the wake of fears about bird flu, airport officials at LAX are also drawing up plans for quarantining a plane load of people if need be, possibly in this airplane hangar. We'll work hand-in-hand -hand with CDC to make sure that this epidemic, if it does happen, stays on the airport until we can and they can control it. Health officials say anyone who has a deadly flu virus and is contagious may not even show any symptoms until after they are off the airplane. And that's, they say, why it is so critical to be able to track passengers after the fact. So, Elizabeth, these rules are now proposed and open for public comment. All right, I'm sure there will be plenty of public comment. Lisa Stark, thank you. And now to the war on terror. In Virginia, a jury has convicted an Arab-American college student of plotting to kill President Bush. Ahmed Omar Abu Ali was first arrested at a university in Saudi Arabia. Prosecutors say he went there with the intention of becoming a terrorist leader. He was also convicted of providing support to al-Qaeda. He could get life in prison. And in Washington, an indictment was unsealed today against another American citizen, the so-called Dirty Bomber. The Brooklyn-born man had been held in the military brig in the U.S. for more than three years without being charged. The case has become something of a lightning rod for civil rights groups who say the war on terror does not give the government license to hold an American citizen without trial. Our justice correspondent Pierre Thomas has the latest. Jose Padilla was portrayed in 2002 as a direct threat to national security. 
we have captured a known terrorist who was exploring a plan to build and explode a radiological dispersion device or dirty bomb in the United States. But today the government accused Padilla of a completely different conspiracy to murder, maim, and kidnap people overseas. The indictment alleges that Padilla traveled overseas to train as a terrorist with the intention of fighting in violent jihad. There was not a single word about a dirty bomb. The government never had a case with respect to the allegations that they um, put before the public, frightened the public, for three and a half years. Padilla, sometimes called the dirty bomber, is an American citizen. Critics have claimed his three-year detention in this military brig as an enemy combatant was unconstitutional. The government was heading for a showdown after Padilla's attorneys petitioned the Supreme Court to release him or bring charges. Today, Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez said there is no longer a need for that Supreme Court showdown. And since he has now been charged in a grand jury in Florida, uh, we believe that the petition is moot. But Padilla's attorney says the Supreme Court should rule on the limits of presidential power. It is important for all of us to have a determination on the extent the president may use his authority to arrest an American citizen and then just hold them without charges. Some legal scholars agree. The Padilla case represents pretty extreme arguments of presidential power being put forward by this administration. It's ready to be resolved. The White House does not want the Supreme Court to take this case. They say the president needs great latitude in fighting the war on terror. Elizabeth? All right, Pierre Thomas, thanks so much. And now to Iraq, U.S. Ambassador Zalmay Khalizad and General George Casey, the senior commander of U.S. forces in Iraq, had a very close call today. Insurgents fired a mortar at a ceremony they were attending. <laughs> Nearly everyone scrambled for cover. The mortar fell 300 yards away but did not explode. The ceremony soon resumed, marking the return of one of Saddam Hussein's palaces to the new local government in his hometown, Decrete. The other major headline about Iraq today, Iraq's rival political factions have united to demand a timetable for the pullout of U.S. troops from Iraq. Shiites, Sunnis, and Kurds issued the joint statement at the end of a reconciliation conference in Cairo. It was a rare moment of unity, and it comes as the Bush administration battles pressure here at home to commit to a pullout schedule. ABC's White House correspondent Martha Raddatz has the latest. It is the first time Iraq's political leaders have called for a timetable. Today, Sunnis, Shiites, and Kurds agreeing on a withdrawal of foreign troops on a specified timetable dependent on an immediate national program for rebuilding the security forces. For months, the White House has refused to offer up a withdrawal schedule, and today a senior U.S. commander refused as well. I'm not going to get into a timetable. But there is a working plan to draw down U.S. forces. More than 158,000 troops are in Iraq today. Senior officials tell ABC News the plan calls for at least 10,000 fewer forces by March. By the end of 2006, the troop level is expected to drop to 110,000. We asked General Vines in a recent interview in Baghdad whether a drawdown could occur if security remains as bad as it has been in the last few months. There are a lot of factors that enter into it, but the answer is yes. If the Iraqi security forces are more capable, if the government is more capable and the conditions were the same, they can shoulder a greater share of the burden, absolutely. Even if the, if the insurgency is at the same level? Absolutely. There are already concrete signs the drawdown is in the works. A 3,000 soldier brigade from Fort Riley, scheduled to leave for Iraq next month, has been put on hold. A senior military official tells ABC News they're not going, although a small number of soldiers from the brigade may go. Some officials say the Iraqi demands for a timetable will provide the White House with political cover, Elizabeth. They do not want to appear. They were following the Democrats' lead. All right, Martha Raddatz from the White House. Thank you so much. One other item from overseas today. New guidelines from the Vatican will bar homosexuals with what the church calls deep-seated gay tendencies from the priesthood, as well as those who support gay culture. But the Vatican will allow men who are gay but celibate for at least three years to become priests. 
When we return nearly three months after Hurricane Katrina, how can 4,000 people still be missing? We'll take a closer look. The Xbox goes on sale, Microsoft's billion-dollar gamble to revolutionize home entertainment. And a milestone tonight, Ted Koppel signs off, remembering a quarter century of remarkable television. This is World News Tonight, brought to you by Verizon. The Verizon Wireless Network. It's more than phone calls. It's pictures, music, video, internet. On the go, anytime. More than 50,000 people make this happen. People who are highly trained, knowledge hungry, and never satisfied with good enough. But the best part of being Verizon Wireless, I don't just look forward to the future. I build it. I build it. I build it. We build it. Our people, our network. Ooh, you okay? Uh, it's this arthritis pain. Arthritis pain? Try my leave. People with arthritis are sharing their good news. Oh, oh honey, mm. you've got to try this Aleve. Good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. Oh. Try my Aleve, Mom. It's amazing. Only Aleve has the strength to stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills. That would take eight Tylenol. Oh. Aleve, that's good news you'll want to share. To share your good news about Aleve, go to AleveGoodNews.com. This is it, my time to shine. Gray hair replaces it with subtle tones for a natural look in five easy minutes. This is everything I wanted. This is just me. If you're gonna get up this early, it's gotta be big. Get to Big Lots at 7 a.m. Thursday and save big on these Thursday-only closeout deals. While supplies last, get the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Disc Launcher, Men's Fruit of the Loom T-shirts, Bitterford Electric Blankets, this oversized rocker recliner, and a set of three spiral trees, just $19.99. These big deals are Thanksgiving Day only, starting at 7 a.m. Remember, to save big this holiday season, it's gotta be Big Lots. If you're concerned about catching a cold or the flu this season, Here's an idea. Move to a deserted island and avoid other people for six months. <laughs> or just drink a glass of Florida orange juice every day. Give your immune system more of the vitamins and minerals it needs. Florida orange juice. Healthy, pure and simple. An unusual new program to help the needy heat their homes began in Massachusetts today. The need is great in many parts of the country. Heating oil costs 28 percent more now than last winter. But Congress has added no money to the federal heating assistance program. So what's unusual is about the, about the new program is who is behind it. Hugo Chavez, president of oil producing Venezuela. Is he being a good neighbor or is he trying to score points against the Bush administration? Here's ABC's Dan Harris. At a rain-soaked, media-saturated event outside Boston today, the first delivery of discounted home heating oil to Linda Kelly, a struggling mother of three, courtesy of Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. I don't see any political issues. I just want to be, keep my family warm. Kelly, who says the cheap oil means her family won't have to choose between heat and food, is not concerned by allegations that Chavez is doing this just to embarrass President Bush. Chavez has been rattling Mr. Bush's cage for years, accusing the administration of wanting to invade his oil-rich country, cozying up to Cuban dictator Fidel Castro, and disrupting Mr. Bush's effort to forge a free trade agreement at a Latin American summit by leading a protest. The Venezuelans say their discount home heating oil program offered through Citgo, which is owned by the Venezuelan government, is a humanitarian gesture aimed at tens of thousands of low-income Americans. The Bush administration says it's, quote, for political gain, an argument officials in Massachusetts today rejected. This today is about people. It's not about politics. With billions of dollars from rising oil prices, Chavez has been offering things like free surgeries to his own people and cheap gas to neighboring countries in an attempt to boost his, attempt to boost his popularity 
influence regional elections and push his brand of anti-capitalist, anti-American politics. He sees himself as a, a, as a modern-day revolutionary. He sees himself as unifying Latin America, as building a Latin America that is independent from the United States. Of course, if oil prices go down, so will Chavez's influence. But few predict a steep decline anytime soon. So the man they call El Comandante may be able to wield petrol power from Mexico to Massachusetts for some time to come. Dan Harris, ABC News, New York. And we'll have that story about the thousands still missing after Hurricane Katrina for you tomorrow night. When we come back, the new Xbox, Microsoft's huge bet on the future, trying to change home entertainment forever. Cholesterol comes from two sources. It's not only from that footlong Frank, but from your grandpa Frank. And not just from that Virginia ham, but from your Aunt Ginny too. Your cholesterol doesn't just come from food. It also has a lot to do with family history. Ask your doctor about Vitorin. A healthy diet is important, but when it's not enough, adding Vitorin can help. Vitorin treats the two sources of cholesterol, food, and what your body makes naturally based on family history. Vitorin was proven in clinical studies to lower bad cholesterol more than Lipitor alone. Vitorin is not for everyone, including people with liver problems, women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Unexplained muscle pain or weakness could be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Vitorin may interact with other medicines or certain foods, increasing your risk of getting this serious side effect. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Follow a healthy diet and ask your doctor about adding Vitorin. For the two sources of cholesterol, remember the name Vitorin. That's Vitorin. Still getting dandruff? Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo helps eliminate dandruff starting after just one use. T-Gel Shampoo. It works. Neutrogena. The Kia Amati has just been ranked the most appealing premium mid-size car by J.D. Power & Associates. Amati owners could tell you why they rated their cars highest in a study that looked at design, content, layout, and performance. But some things just speak for themselves. Discover what Kia owners already know. Lease a new 2005 Amante for only $289 a month. Ordinary toothbrushes can't stand up to it. New Oral-B Triumph. Triumph's onboard computer and floss action brush head will give you dramatically cleaner teeth and healthier gums. New Oral-B Triumph. Brush like a dentist. After the baby, I started working out and taking a pain reliever for my knee. Went back to work, needed something else for tension headaches. Baby got big, I got one more for my back. Every new pain, a different pain reliever, but not anymore. Today, I'm all Advil. Advil is my every pain reliever. Works on all my pain, wherever I hurt. So I'm ready for anything. I'm all Advil. A breakthrough story for anyone who hates this. If you know your party's extension, please dial 1. Your response was not understood. Tomorrow, inside information on how to beat the system and get straight to a real person for help. Don't waste any more time. Watch World News tonight. There was midnight madness as stores across the country began selling Microsoft's highly anticipated new video game player early this morning. Video games have become a $27 billion a year business worldwide, and now it's poised to grow even bigger. But Microsoft is positioning the new Xbox as much more than just a game. Here's ABC's John Berman. They lined up far and wide, day and night, all to get their hands on this. Microsoft Xbox 360, the most anticipated new product in the white-hot business of video games an industry that already brings in more money in the U.S. than movies. You ready to get picked up? Michael Futter is the epitome of the average gamer. 27 years old, male, the father of one. He pre-ordered his Xbox 360 in May. I'm one of those people who needs to have a system on the first day. I need to get in at the ground floor. He picked up his new game just after midnight. I cannot wait to get home. I am really, really excited. The Xbox 360's stunning lifelike graphics and internet capabilities are what is so attractive to hardcore gamers. But Microsoft is hoping to reach a much bigger audience. On the 360, you can play DVDs and music. 
Just as Microsoft dominates your computer screen, the company wants to take over your living room. It's not just a gaming machine, it's this home entertainment system that's going to let you do everything in your living room that you ever would want to do. Since Microsoft introduced its first Xbox in 2001, it has lost billions, the cost of breaking into the industry. But it is gambling on the future. It's certainly a mainstream medium, certainly growing faster than any other form of entertainment, and we think has tremendous prospects for the future. Already many stores have sold out, and since midnight, more than 1,500 360s have sold on eBay for prices way above the $400 sticker price. The biggest complaint about the Xbox is that there are only 18 new games to play on it right now. But that's fine with Mike Futter. He's taken the next two days off from work just to play. John Berman, ABC News, New York. Now that's a fan. You hear a lot about the negative effects of video games, but there are some positives. Did you know that playing video games might actually make you smarter? Find out how at our website, wnp.abcnews.com, where you can also look back at the hot items from Christmas past. It's part of our new programming online, and we call it Broadcast Plus. One of the country's great journalists has died. Hugh Seide spent 40 years covering American presidents for Time magazine. The relationship between the president and the press, quote, should be as friendly enemies, he wrote. We are concerned with what really happens rather than what the White House tells us. Mr. Seide was known for capturing the personal side of the most powerful men on the planet. He once interviewed JFK in the White House swimming pool. He liked to say that presidents are not as tall or as articulate as you think they should be. But when you write about them, you realize just how vital they are to the country. Hugh Seide was 78. And when we come back 26 years on Nightline, Ted Koppel signs off, the man who changed television and helped change the world. Oh. You can get pretty congested when mucus moves into your chest. Welcome to our new home. Very cozy. Make yourself comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just ignore that. That's why there's Mucinex. It's specially made to break up mucus that causes congestion. Uh-oh. <laughs> Honeymoon's over! Ah, much better. And only Mucinex lasts up to 12 hours. Next time, I take the place. Yes, dear. Mucinex in, mucus out. Customer service is back in shipping. Call us and we'll show you how we're changing the way the shipping business does business. One box, seven box, 39, 218. It's Glade West, the first automatic home air freshener you can actually see working. 245. Glade West delivers a puff of fragrance automatically. And unlike other air fresheners that fade, the last puff smells as great as the first. Always working to keep your home smelling fresh. Glade West, the proof is in the puff. S.C. Johnson, a family company. Make your holidays smell like a celebration with Glade West Apple Cinnamon. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year all our troubles will be outside. This holiday season, deck the halls with the famously fresh taste of planters. Lunesta. People everywhere are discovering it. What are you waiting for? Talk to your doctor to see if Lunesta could make a difference for you. The Braum Activator's smart foil captures hair growing in any direction for a closer shave. And its cleaning center keeps it feeling like new every day. The Braun Activator, the world's best self-cleaning shaver, guaranteed. Straight ahead at 6, Valley City's having to pay the price for budgeting blunders at the new Yakima County Jail. What it means for Yakima City law enforcement. Those stories plus sports and weather coming up next. Finally tonight, saying goodbye. As you may know, this evening, Ted Koppel will step down from Nightline.
the program he's anchored for the last 26 years. It is an incredible story, still unfolding to this very moment. An incredible story indeed. This is Ted Koppel, ABC it's News. It's more than 20 miles from here to the red Chinese border. Ted Koppel began as a reporter in the field. All night long, the camp has been under enemy mortar attack. In 1979, with Americans held hostage in Iran, Koppel began broadcasting at 11.30 each night to give Americans the latest. This is the fifth agonizing day for the U.S. government. ABC News took a risk and turned that late-night broadcast into Nightline. This is a new broadcast. In the Ted Koppel would use this opportunity to change television news. It has been suggested to me that we need a symbolic divider between our Israeli guests on the one hand and our Palestinian guests on the other. Bringing together people in conflict. We do not want to accept F citizen F of a certain F country, F but we F have decided... F taking on the racial divide in America. I heard him refer to all of the giants in our community as you people. If we're ever going to reach our hands out to one another, you can't lump us all together any more than we can lump you all together. Ted Koppel brought his audience to Kosovo. We were shown the pictures of the people who had been executed by the Serbs. And there were men and women and children. Um, yeah. And the Congo. The number of victims who have died here over the last three years is about two and a half million. Two and a half million you'd think we would have noticed. What is going on here can be a matter of life and death. At age 63, he traveled to Iraq with the 3rd Infantry Division. Koppel wanted to cover America's new war firsthand. Something that Shakespeare wrote for Henry V, wreak havoc and unleash the dogs of war. And there they start moving into Iraq. One year later came his controversial program honoring America's fallen. Andrew Chris. Oren Saul Smith. Ted Koppel has never shied from confrontation. Mr. Brown, some of these people are dead. They're beyond your help. Don't you guys watch television? Don't you guys listen to the radio? You are attacking me. You are speaking to General Arafat. I understand. Who's more frustrating, me or Arafat? Um, <laughs> he's, he's funnier. Um, <laughs> In 1995, Ted Koppel introduced America to Maury Schwartz, who was suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease. I want you to confront for me the moment when your still active mind is a prisoner of your no longer functioning body. That has to scare the hell out of you. Not yet. Not yet. Ted Koppel, in his conversations with Maury, showed America that a dying man had much to teach about living. When I am dying, I don't only have to be taking, I can also be giving. Nightline will continue, but 11.35 tonight is Ted's final broadcast. Yes, it will be Tuesday with Maury, and we wish Ted well. I'm Elizabeth Vargas. Good night. <laughs>